software solutions, um, and some of the applications use Python. Okay, not all of it's in Python. I wish it was, but uh, we we go with the the flow. Uh, we have a problem, especially when you're dealing with government. There's lots of tender documents, and so you get nice little perlers like this one. And the important words to look for is industry standard enterprise programming framework. And we want to say Python. But they expect that, which is a little bit of a problem. Sometimes we can talk our way around it. Um, sometimes we can't. The other problem is you also get this one, it must run an enterprise web application server. We want to say that. They want us to answer that. Um, so we have a dilemma. So we could rewrite it in Java, but that's just plain bloody stupid. So we use Jython. Um, and it was one of those things, if somebody ever saw my lightning talk about running Django under Java, uh, it was one of those things where it was like it was always there in my back pocket if we ever had to do it. But I wasn't 100% sure whether it would work. Um, and in the last year, we were uh, called to task. And so uh, this talk is less about how we did it and more about what you can do. But it's based on the experiences that we uh, went through to achieve answering those questions without having to lie. Oops. OK, so Jython's been around a long time. Um, it suffered a bit where it reached the equivalent of Python 2.1 and sort of stopped. And it sat there for quite a long time. And then one of the guys that started working on Python went to work for Sun. And that was around the time when Sun was doing the embedded dynamic languages on the Java virtual machine. And so a lot of effort went into uh, get it to support new style classes and things like that. And so now we're actually sitting at version 2.5. and um, we're actually 2.5.2, and that, there was a release just about a month ago that came out with that. Um, describing Jython is, it's just like Python. You get a standard library with it. Uh, as you can see on the, on the console there, it works exactly like Python. So the only difference is it's running inside the Java virtual machine. Um, it's not that hard to use. So it's as simple as downloading the installer and using what Java has, has as a way of installing things for the deployable. And then it's just go through the GUI and do all the stuff. And you have, as long as you have Java on your machine, Java 1.5, Java 1.6. Okay, and when the next release comes out, which is a debate whether they're going to go to 2.6 or they chase 3.0, uh, that'll be a 1.6. Now, before we get into the nice things you can do with Jython, I thought I'd better do the pros and cons. Uh, it runs most code. Most Python code that you've got will work. Um, the odd one, you'll have to do a little bit of a mod. It has no global interpreter lock. So if you are writing threaded programs, it does perform better than CPython with, with its global interpreter lock. It still has the import module lock. So you need to be a little bit careful there. But truthfully, if you're dealing in Java anyway, you are going to be in a threaded, threaded environment. So you're going to uh, enjoy the benefits of this lack of global interpreter lock. It's interesting that most of the non-C implementations of Python don't have the global interpreter lock. It's only the reference one that does. Um, the other one, which might sound a bit weird, is you can access Java libraries. Funny that. We're running on the Java virtual machine, so you can access Java libraries. It does give you a lot more flexibility. There are Python's batteries included. There are lots and lots of libraries, probably way too many libraries. So the quality of some of the libraries leave a bit to be desired. The quality of some of the Java libraries make Python libraries look like a pitiful attempt at things. So it is an option if there's something really specific, especially when you get into crypto and things like that. The Java libraries are a lot more um, industry standard and, and up with what's going on where the Python libraries tend to be dragging on behind, tend to be rather slow. 
so the other thing too to think about when you're running under Jython is if you need to do a performance tweak and you find that your bottlenecks in uh, normally in a library or something like that you can make an easy change to call a Java library and you will nine times out of ten see a performance improvement because it's running compiled code but of course we have to have cons um, performance it's running in the Java virtual machine it's a dynamic language it runs slower uh, truthfully the only real performance hit is startup time which is lethargic um, but there's a number of things that that you can do to improve that one it has a little caching system where it compiles the Python code down to Java bytecode and then stores that in, in this little cache directory so one of your big hits is the first time it sees a new jar file or you access a, a Python file it has to go through that bytecode compiling once you've done that it's actually uh, not part of the startup routine the other thing is again when you tend to be working in Java you tend to be doing long running processes once it's up and running it actually performs quite well um, I wouldn't want to sit there and time a hundred thousand uh, iteration it's definitely going to be slower than CPython but again that's where I'm saying about the certain things where you're going to get that slowness you might want to look at doing the little test if I was running on Jython use the Jython library for it instead you can create a nice little wrapper in Python to, to probably make it look the same the other one which I don't really see as a, as a con but some people do is there's no C extensions right? so there are a few libraries that people love in the Python library that are reliant on the fact that underneath it is a C library that's just wrapped uh, as Python goes on more and more of these get replaced uh, but you can get called out so NumPy is going to be an issue um, but again that's when you would look at the um, different uh, Java libraries um, the other thing which the, you know the main thing to do as I said you can call Java code I, I could sit here and show you about running Python code but as I said it just works like Python so that would be boring we already we're all being drunk the Python Kool-Aid we know how how neat it is so it's no value in me taking you through a learn Python course so as I said as long as it doesn't have a C extension in the library the Python code that you run you would be able to run under Jython so just take it as read that that's going to work but one of the powerful features is the ability to talk to a Java library so I'll, I'll use an example that we had uh, we needed to format telephone numbers and so I went looking and first of all I went looking in Python and at the time the various libraries that are out there for formatting telephone numbers left a lot to be desired and then I found this lib phone number which is actually a Google open source library uh, it's interesting as of this week there now is a Python implementation of it um, but we've gone down that path now so the first thing you'll see up there is you know in, in Java you have the the package name think of it as exactly packages like uh, in the nested hierarchy you get in a Python thing so all you do is you oops you basically import from the Java library so you can read the APIs that are, are there for it and you import the thing and I'm sorry I'm going to get back to where I want to get to okay so one of the things that I didn't like about uh, this library was you sort of had to make multiple calls so to make it a little bit easier to use I just wrapped it up in a Python class so I could do my formatting and validation on one object now uh, the phone number is optimized for running on Android phone and there's probably reasons why they wanted it that way so I, I just wanted to wrap it up like that we run that in the background as a long-running process that we talk to okay and so basically if a telephone number changes on the screen we make a call we validate that it is a valid telephone number we then format it in an international format and then we store it in the database nicely formatted so um, and it's fast uh, much better than us trying to write something and as I said the Python library to do this only became available this week and it's beta 1 so 
Uh, it allowed us to do something relatively, we need, the problem appeared, uh, three days later we had the solution. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can call Jython from Java. Okay, um, this is the first horrible bit. Uh, it's not simple. If you're a Java programmer, you probably think it is. Um, so you've got to think like a Java programmer. So we've got to have an interface. So that's the bit down the uh, bottom there. So it's, um, we've got to define what, what we can do with our class. We write our class in, um, in, in Python, but we have to import the interface from the Java code. Then we have to create an object factory. <laughs> um, so you know, so we do that. <laughs> so that's so we can make the Jython module look like a Java class. Then we call the Java class from Java. See, I told you it's not simple. Um, but uh, there's probably some value in it. We don't do this. We've had no need to do this. Uh, but as I said, it's probably from a um, if you're a Java programmer, it's, pro it's probably not as complex. There is also a project out there, I think it's called Plygi, which is, you run it and it basically builds all these wrappers for you. Um, so it can make it um, a little bit uh, simpler. Uh, and possibly if you had an investment in um, some part of uh, that written in Python, but then the decision was made that you were going to code most of it in Java, or you were adding it into some Java-based workflow system, uh, you could do this. The much better way to do it, or in my opinion anyway, uh, is you've got this nice Python interpreter, so why don't you just do your Python code from inside your Java code calling the interpreter? Uh, there's two ways of doing this. Uh, since, Python, uh, since Java 1.6, there is, it has been a mechanism in, uh, in Java whereby you can embed a dynamic language. Right? So this is a JSR223. Um, and so basically what you can do is, as you see there, is you can evaluate Python statements, you can set variables, you can pull variables back and do things like that. That's a very Java way of doing it. I believe this was originally written so that they could run Groovy and JRuby from within Java. Jython added it in to, to do the support. But uh, Jython's always had the ability to be embedded in Java prior to that, and which was basically by making a Python interpreter object available. Uh, same type of thing. Um, but you get access to all the Python objects as well. So, uh, you know, this is a bit of a contrived example that I've got here. The other thing, which is which is how we are starting to use it, is we tend to have our Python as scripts, and we've got a workflow engine, and what we're doing is we're scripting up the build, the setting up of all the components, the workflow engine, basically with a Jython script, rather than writing it all in Java. And so we're using both the ability for the startup to load up the Python interpreter, it loads in the Python script, then it's talking to all the Java classes and making all the um, bindings so that everything works together the way we want it. Want to change the workflow, go in with VI into your Python script, tell it to reload it, you've got the new workflow, no compiling, no Eclipse needed um, out of the client site as you're working on the workflow. Uh, database access. Um, in, if you're in Python, you use the um, DB API. Uh, I think it's, it's probably been around for about seven years. Uh, somebody wrote a adapter that basically wraps JDBC and makes it look like the Python DB API version two. And so that basically means if you've got a JDBC driver, you can connect to a database and talk to it exactly as you would using Python. And, and truthfully, it, to me, it's one of the most powerful things because if you look at a lot of the, the database adapters for CPython, unless they're an open source database, they tend to run behind because the vendors of proprietary databases are, are not that interested in developing a CPython wrapper. 
it's changed a little bit. IBM now, with DB2 and Infomix, is releasing C Python wrappers pretty well in sync. But Oracle doesn't give you one, so you have to use CX Oracle or something like that. But all those proprietary people and all the open source projects have JDBC drivers. So, um, and one of the really nice things about the JDBC driver is because it has this nice little URL here, you can actually change the database with a config file as a, for the database engine. You can even change the engine, change what database you're pointing to. Which sometimes with the way the uh, C Python uh, APIs work, unless you're using something like SQL Alchemy or uh, you write your own thing that converts uh, a URL to the way the different drivers call, it's a little bit tougher to do that. Um, so uh, this one runs on Postgres. I could throw my SQL one in, and as long as I had the same table structure, it would work exactly the same. I don't know how to does that. Um, the other thing is this understands the Java naming and directory interface. So that's the mechanism that Java provides where, especially when you're running in a Java server container or in an enterprise Java bean environment, you can pull your JDBC connections. And so basically that allows you in your Jython code to pull a connection out of, out of um, the connection pool and take advantage of some of the uh, things that the Java world's done to make those type of things quite efficient. Um, and, and, and truthfully, it it's, won't fall back into CPython, but um, it definitely works straight out of the box for it. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can use Python uh, object relational mappers. So SQL Alchemy is the one that I know that works. Um, and basically what the developers of SQL Alchemy have done is they've added in support for the ZX JDBC driver. So because that's there, then basically all the things you do with SQL Alchemy work in Jython. And so you can get some really nice things. And truthfully, it is a lot more efficient than how Java does persistence um, on their, with their systems. Um, so that's straight out of um, a tutorial with a change of the data flow base that I, um, I'm using as my example, and it just works. So I didn't have to think about it. The only thing I had to think about was what did the URL look like? And it is documented in the SQL Alchemy pages. You just have to find it. Uh, if you really want to bash your head against the wall, you can use Java's Hibernate. Um, now there's, there's some reasons for why you might want to use that, especially if somebody else, is, if you already got a Java application that's using Hibernate as its, as its object layer above um, the relational database. There's a lot of XML involved when you're dealing with Hibernate, so you'd want to do it that way, and that's why I'm giving an example. Uh, it would take me about 10 slides to actually show you how to use it. But again, because we can call into a Java code, we can basically use a, a Java on to do our work. Um, the web, this is where we're tending to use it a bit more. Um, when Jython first came out, you, the only, um, that was back when Python really didn't have a standard way of doing web integration with the web server. Uh, so Jython basically had a, a piece of functionality added into it so it could wrap around the Java HTTP servlet. And so this is the way, if you were in the, doing the Jython way, where, you, uh, sorry, the Java way, how you would do exactly what you do if you're writing a Java servlet. It's a lot less code than you would use in Java. Um, but you've still got to do, create your web.xml file, uh, copy your scripts or make up a war file, get things in the class path, and then finally you can click on your um, URL and things will work. And then WSDI or WSGI came along and a guy called Alan Kennedy about the time when Philip Eby was doing the WSGI spec implemented a WSGI adapter for Jython. And so now that means we can write 
a web app exactly the same as if we were writing it in CPython and we were using a WSGI adapter on, a, on Apache or Cherry Pi or things like that. Um, the other thing that was quite good about the fact that Alan Kennedy wrote this back then, uh, because we were still only at the equivalent of Python 2.1, the PEP was changed so that it could actually run with something less than Python 2.4. And so that made WSGI a lot more useful. Uh, the, the challenge here still is we're running on Java, so we've still got to write some XML. Um, and this is just a snippet of the web XML where we're de defining that we're using the mod JY servlet and that we're calling our hello world.py and then once you deploy it, it reads that file and it knows how to run it. So since we support WSGI, we can support web frameworks. So I did a lightning talk about this, so this is a much shorter version. It's as simple as you install Django under Jython. Okay, it will install. It won't run because it doesn't know about how to access a database. So there's this really cool little package you can download called Django Jython, which basically adds support for ZXJDBC. And all we have to do is go into our settings file and where you define the engine, you put in uh, the um, ZXJDBC and then it's using the JDBC driver to talk to the database. And then we can basically save the settings file, run the uh, Django development server under Jython, and it works. Now the only limitation is that it works with Postgres, MySQL, Oracle. The SQLite one's a bit flaky. Um, so what I've tended to find is if you develop the Django app on SQLite and CPython and then move it to Jython, it works. Um, I tended to have problems with when it was doing the sync DB and things like that. Now that could have been fixed. I haven't tried the latest release. Uh, the version 3 beta of Django Jython just came out. It works, but I haven't tried it against SQLite. And the other thing that uh, comes with Django Jython is it gets rid of us having to do the XML stuff. So there is a, a new command, manage command, where you can go and create the war file. So if you don't know, under a Java servlet container, there's a little, like a zip archive that has all your information in it, web.xml file, all your libraries and things. You package it up in that, you drop it in your uh, Tomcat or WebSphere or JBoss, and what they do is they automatically open that up and deploy. So um, sort of like a Python egg, but a lot better. Uh, so all you have to do is go run the manage.py with war, the war option. Uh, you need to specify additional jar files that you want to include. So because we're running on Postgres, that jar file needs to be included in the package. Uh, and it will go away and create the war file. And then if I was running Tomcat, I could go into the Tomcat management interface, go deploy, browse for that war file, uploads it, appears in the management interface, click on the management interface. A little bit of slowness on first uh, instance as it opens up the war file and starts up Jython. Then Django works exactly the same. And you can do some other nice things with it. Uh, there's some additional options where you can say, I want to run a shared version because you already have Jython and your various other jar files in the standard Tomcat common area and so it'll make the war file without those bundled together or you can bundle them up which is my preference with all your dependencies in one war file. Now you can also do it with Pyramid and there's two reasons for doing Pyramid. Um, it's a web framework with a real logo rather than a wussy pink <laughs> unicorn. <laughs> Um, but the other thing is it's, it's, a, it's a paste based web, web framework. 
Okay, so everything I'm talking about pyramid uh, could be done with any web framework in Python that uses paste as its deployment, paste.deploy as its um, deployment mechanism. Um, so the really nice thing actually about Pyramid is until you have to do your database interaction, everything works exactly as it would in the CPython world, with one exception. By default, the templating language for Pyramid is Chameleon. Chameleon uses the abstract syntax tree, and Jython doesn't support the parser command. And so what happens is it'll try and install Chameleon, say it fails and carries on. So you fall back to using Marco or Jinja 2 as your template thing for it. That's the only limit. For us, that's not a problem. We use Jinja 2 because we do both Django and Pyramid. And so Jinja 2 is very close to Django's templating language, so it's a lot easier. We also use Zope, but we didn't really use Zope page templates. Um, so we're not missing it too much. Um, database access, the pretty well default to talk to databases with Pyramid is using SQL Alchemy. And so, as I said before, SQL Alchemy works with the JDBC drivers, so that just works pretty well out of the box. There is a, a nice little package called Snakefight, uh, which does something similar to Django Jython for deploying. So it will create your war file for you. And as I said, it's not a Pyramid thing, it's a paste thing. So if you've got your um, paste deploy any file making all the statements about what eggs you have, what entrance points you are, you run snake fight against, uh, against that and it will create a war file and you can do exactly the same thing as I said with Django. Go to your uh, Java servlet container, deploy it and it works. Okay, it did. Now I'll, I'll, I can't give you the exact details. Um, we ended up in a situation where, for very important reasons for the company, we had to deploy under WebSphere. And normally what we would have done is we would act, for this particular thing, we would have put Zopen. Um, but what was quite nice is a lot of the stuff that was in Zope we could actually pull out. So we did. So we, we lost a bit of our Zope functionality. but. A lot of the libraries in that that we were calling in it, we uh, could still use. So what we did is uh, we used two little web frameworks to do a little bit of wrapping for us. Pyramid was the main one, and a little web framework called Restish, um, which is which I suggest is a good one for having a look at if you want to create a simple web restful web service without the overhead of a heavy framework. It's a paste.deploy based thing. Uh, we could do that. So we changed some things that we would have normally done on Zope to use that, and we deployed under WebSphere. Now, to prove that we weren't lying, we actually got certified that way. So we actually had the IBM government framework certification on WebSphere running under Jython. So, and it's interesting because Jython now is this um, admin scripting language for WebSphere. Uh, first out of the block was a thing called um, Je um, Jekyll, which is basically Tickle with a J in front of it. Um, but uh, the guy at IBM was telling me, due to somebody who was in the IBM labs who liked Python, <laughs> uh, they added that in, and that's now what they push as the, um, as the admin scripting language. So we, we do it with that. Um, prior to that, we did a couple of uh, things earlier in that. We used Jasper reports. Uh, we run it in like a standalone mode where we pipe some XML into it. We could have written the wrapper in Java, but at the time we didn't have Java programmers. Uh, we had Python programmers, so the wrapper is written in Jython. Uh, there, as I said, there's a workflow system that we've got now. As I said, we're looking at um, we're slowly working through changing that so it uses the scripting. So all the things that we have to tweak on a per client basis, we will do as a Python script and let all the performance and speed stuff stay in Java. Uh, there's plenty of resources out there. The best one is the guys that are the core contributors to Jython wrote a book 
and uh, you can either buy the hard copy, uh, but the, it's there fully done in uh, Sphinx on the web for free. So you, you can go through, I, I refer to it a lot, especially the bit about how to use the, um, uh, the JSR233 stuff, because we don't use it, and that's where I go. The example for using Hibernate is in there. Um, there are a few uh, videos on the web from various PyCons where guys are talking about things you can do. There's a very good one on talking uh, to Jython from Java, probably a better explanation than I've given. Uh, the other good thing is a lot of things that two years ago I would have said you'd have to go, go here to look for the ZX JDBC docs and you'd have to go here to look for the major mod JY. These are now part of the standard distribution. So their documents are as part of Jython. So um, quite good in that. Um, if you did find these slides of any value, uh, they will be published after PyCon APAC. Um, so it's either Friday or Saturday I'll give my talk, it keeps changing. So um, I'll pump them up after that. Um, I need to give credits for the images. Uh, probably the main one, which is the pyramid image, buy the t-shirt. Um, as I said, is one of the few things in Python that is a cool logo. Uh, <laughs> so that's my talk. If people want to see things running real, I can do that. I've got it all um, running on my laptop here, but um, I'll open up for any questions that people might have. Does yes. it run up under OpenJDK or is it just some hot spot? No, no, it runs, runs out. I, I don't run it under, I've done it once. I wouldn't run, a, I wouldn't run it under the um, GPL Java. <laughs> That's atrociously slow to start with, so it's, uh, but, but OpenJDK should work fine. I tried it about a year ago and it worked. Right. Um, but I just tend to um, stick with the Java or the IBM, JVM. Um, actually found the IBM one was um, a lot better, but you know, personal opinion. Yep? What, what proportion of, of your uh, of these, uh, applications are written in Python? Are they almost entirely in Python? No, I, I, what, what we tend to do is a lot of our web is written in Python, and uh, our, our solutions are cross-platform. So originally, you're all our developments done on Linux, and prior to that it was AIX. But we run on Windows servers and things like that. So where Python first came into, other than the web, was to create a scripting language. So we didn't have to have shell scripts and command files and things like that. So pretty well, most of our glue is written in Python. Uh, our e emailer, job queues, um, generation to PDF. That's all Python. But your domain is in Java? Nope. It's actually in a proprietary 4GL. Uh, two years ago, I would have said we had no Java at all. We're becoming more of a Java shop. But that's just, the company's getting quite large. We've, uh, I've got .NET programmers, I've got Java programmers, I've got 4GL programmers. Probably the only one where there's commonality between all the programmers is Python. So uh, we do a bit of proto prototyping in it. In most cases, those prototypes then move into something real with Python. I, I will go out of my way to use Python. It's a luxury I enjoy because of the position I have in the company. Um, but also, Python has always delivered. Um, and so at the moment, there's no negative if we fail. <laughs> we're about to deploy a big software as a service that's written in Django. And that will run under C Python, unless a cl um, we also will sell that as a standalone thing, and then depending on what uh, the client wants, whether they feel that they've got a big Java infrastructure, it will then run under the um, under Java. But I'll, I'll always go C Python to start with. But yeah. so, as I said, I wish it was more. Um, I, I think one of the biggest problems with Python as a whole is our application is over 600. No, sorry, over 600 tables, thousands of programs. Um, trying to do that as a big threaded application in any language 
would be horrible. The tool set that we use for doing those type of stuff works really well from a process based point of view. So it's hard to replace it. But what we're doing is at, we're, we're adding an API on top of it so third party stuff can access this. All that is being written in Python. So as I get more of the API, it makes it easy for me to change the front end. That, 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 uh, no, but the thing is, it's, it supports the future things, so the width is there and things like that. And, and I've got to be a little bit careful because I, I tend to stick more with the versions of Python that are running on the Linux distributions that you know we have to support. And you know, so so I need to be a little bit careful about saying what, what's in two point six and what's in two point seven. Um, so we don't tend to use it. So so at the moment, it's not. Uh, a stopping point for us. I think what they'll try and do is, is probably download the source and bump the Python version and compile it. Is it linked again to Python 2? Yeah, I, yeah. As I said, I, I don't know enough about the the, the differences. Of thing. I mean, two point seven is going to be a challenge because there's a lot of backporting of three, and I and I would I would suggest that the Jython contributors are more looking at. It's probably better from that perspective to be trying to support three. Um, rather than doing 2.7. But I, I don't speak for them, so I could be talking total rubbish. <laughs> um, but as I said, the 2.5, we haven't found it as a, as a limiting factor. And probably the one thing we're just starting to use now is the width statement. So I can do that with import from future. So, um, and you know, that's nice. Um, you know, I guess one of the other nice things that sort of comes from it, and what, when we use SQL Alchemy with Pyramid, we can use the Zope transaction handling. So that makes all the rollback stuff really nice. Um, that's tougher in Java, actually. So, um, and those are just things, you know, um, standing on the shoulders of others. <laughs> um, I didn't have to think about it. As I said, we came originally, we, our path was from Zope. So in some respects, we're sort of coming full circle um, without having to run Zope 3. Um, so it's quite nice getting that feel, but, you know, as I said, it just depends on our client. Um, if they turn around and say they're a, a Java shop, we'll go down that path. Uh, if they say they're a Windows shop, um, we'll tend to either run uh, with a Python server behind the sorry, Python server behind the, uh, behind IIS or um, the Asapi Whiskey adapter. But I'm biased there because I wrote that. So. Um, but again, same thing as it's trying to get that code. Reuse, and I mean that's a really nice thing about Python, and, and why we use it as glue, is you, I worry less about the platform. Would you consider something like Iron Python for the same sorts of requirements? I I did a lot with Iron Python when it first came out. Um, the only the problem, it, I haven't tried the latest version, and it probably would work okay. Um, there's a beautiful whiskey adapter for uh, Iron Python now, uh, which is actually written as C sharp code, so it's more similar to like mod whiskey on Apache. So one of the things that was a problem was the whiskey adapter for IIS for Iron Python was slow. I have to accept some responsibility for that because I was one of the people that wrote that one. Um, but it would appear that in .NET there's a bigger impedance mismatch between the dynamic language and uh, calling from the CLR. Where Iron Python is really good is if you're, if you're definitely running more like the, uh, the first example I gave of Jython, where you're, you're running your stuff outside of C Sharp, it certainly, and you need to talk to .NET classes and stuff, it's certainly an option. Uh, the good news is even though Microsoft stopped developing it internally, and Sun when Oracle took over, that's exactly the same thing that happened to Jython, uh, is there's a little community that's kept on going and they're pushing, they're hoping to push out a 2.7 uh, release in the next month or so. Once that's done, the focus is fully on going to Python 3. Um, so same thing as I, it, it's, if I saw a need for it, it I, it's like sitting in my toolbox. Um, if somebody is adamant, we have to run an IIS 10 whenever it comes out or something like that. Um, you know, 
that would be an option that we'd, we'd look at. Uh, the challenge will be the database access. There is a DB API for I and Python. Um, I did find that some of the uh, .NET providers had a bit of difficulty running in that, and things weren't getting converted quite as nicely as they do in Jython. But yeah, no, it's, it's definitely an option. Um, it's probably slower than Jython. Um, but yeah, you can C sharp your way around that. Okay. Oh, Does one, you mean okay. just the reports, Mark? Yeah, yeah. You do? Yeah, just the en engine itself. We don't use the um, the other stuff, so yeah. Just the four? Uh, we're, we're three at the moment, but four does run. Um, yeah, so it, as I said, it was a nice wrapper, and rather than us trying to, uh, you know, one of the things which, one, one of the things that's really nice about a Jython or an Iron Python um, is everything that you can do in C Python when you're trying to work out what that damn package does. And so you sit there experimenting in the console, um, works exactly the same in Jython and Iron Python. So you can sit there and poke your way around, and you can use help and you can use DIR to see what the various signatures and stuff are. So um, the same thing is it's 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 similar to like Jasper reports. Before actually sitting down and writing the, the thing, is um, myself and one other person in this room sat at the Jython con, uh, console and played with the um, the Jasper uh, jar files to try and work out how we were going to do it because it's. Sort of not. You can look at the Java stuff, and then you have to get rid of the noise, which is all the semicolons and curly braces and interfaces and stuff like that before you actually make your Jasper call. Um, so sometimes it's actually easier just to look at the API and then experiment with the API. Uh, one thing where I did get caught out, um, there's, you'll see in a lot of Jython code, there's a tendency to import star because of and I'm not 100% sure what the reason, I think it's how Java publishes some um, of the class names and things. Uh, I got called out with that lib phone number, however they did it in version 2, changed in version 3, so import star failed with a horrible Java exception about that um, the co dynamic collection generator or something um, wasn't there. Uh, so in the end we had to, I had to individually um, you know, do the class names. So um, again, that's the nice thing about it. It's like, shit, it's not working. Uh, get into the console, play with it. Oh, it'll work if I do this. Make uh, one change in the in the code, rerun it against, change my class path back to the new one, and it works. So it's that same uh, interaction that you get the old code, try, code, try thing that you do with Python is exactly the same in Jython or Iron Python. So it's just about keeping the type of interrogate like Java class? Yep. Yeah, you, you, you yeah so as I said, is if, if you look at the API and you see a package structure, the com dot, you know, they have the overhead of their unique naming namespace. Um, it's Think of it exactly like a package in Python. So if you've got HTTP lib and it's got a auth, module you would go and port HTTP live dot auth. Um, Java, Java classes is exactly the same. Um, but as I said, sometimes the dynamic collection generation seems to work. Whatever. Um, I'm probably using the wrong word, but that's the error I got. Uh, sometimes you have to individually do it. Uh, on the odd occasion, you might have to coerce a value into something because uh, it gets a little bit upset about the dynamicness. <laughs> uh, Jython seems to be a lot better than I Python in that respect. In Iron Python, sometimes you have to say, I want it to almost like cast it to this type. And Jython seems to get it right 99 times out of 100. And, and probably now it gets it right all the time. This is experience back in Jython 2.1. Yep. Can you serialize objects? Yeah, yeah, um, you can use the Java one. Yeah, you can use the Java one, or you could use, you could use the pickle, but it would have to be the non-C pickle. Um, and yeah, and, and uh, there I think you would sort of sit there and make a decision about whether is, is it just pure going to run in the Java environment? If it's going to run in the Java environment, you're probably better using Java serialization. Uh, if it was going to run in a dual environment, you might decide you want to write a little wrapper so you can use the best of both worlds. 
but certainly from a prototyping point, point of view, you could use Pickle, um, Element Tree works really nice, isn't it? From an XML perspective. But if you want real speed, then you might fall back to the Stacks driver or something like that for Java. But, it, but again, you do the old testing. You know, is this? An, you can you can do the test. Is does this class exist? So you can do the the old try accept try accept <laughs> until you fall to the lowest common denominator, which is your standard library. Not, not really heavily. Um, certainly, the first hit is really, really slow. That's mainly because the Java into even if you've got all the um, classes byte compiled, it still has to get everything into space and chew up all the memory it has to chew up. Um, but once it was running, because it's an old standard thing, is we used we had database bottlenecked in the end, so. Um, one, one of the really cool things about the Java world from a web experience point of view, other than just deployment, is especially when you're working with the enterprise Java server containers like JBoss and WebSphere and that, they, you can set up clusters and um, horizontally scale really easily. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's one of those things we proved it when we we're doing the certification. <laughs> um, we haven't had to use it to that level yet. Um, and as I said, I would always push the C Python version first, but um, you know you can do it. Um, the, one, one thing is you, you can run under, under App Engine and either C Python or Java. The Jython under the Java version of Google App Engine works. Uh, Alan Kennedy was asked a question, "Why would you do that?" And his comment was exactly the thing: some of the Java libraries are better, and so you you may be better off. Doing that, but, but you st you still get that win of having that ability to do that interpretive type development, which you just don't get with Java. That's why they need really heavy IDEs and stuff because that's you've got to push that compile button. Yep. You mentioned um, you know at the start the the government sector's attitude to platforms. Yep. But you you mentioned also that you're you're introducing a, a new. Software as a service, yep, or, yep. and that uh, you're going to provide the option of, of deploying that potentially in house. Yep. Does that change that attitude? In other words, um, does the, the the enterprise sector have a different attitude to uh, to deploying something on on, on the on the Pyth uh, Python platform if it's a uh, to be deployed in house application that they have decided to. Yeah, I mean, it, that's more where you're likely to get the pushback because it, it all, all comes down to it, it's very dependent on the IT department of the people that you're going into. Uh, if, if they're a, a very switched on IT department that really understands all their servers and things like that, they're, they're the ones you're more likely to get a pushback from because you're asking you to install something on their servers that they don't normally have, which is where the Java option is sometimes handy. We're very, we're quite lucky in Asia, uh, where we tend to look after the systems that we put in, so there's less of a pushback, um, and because we tend to set up the systems, we can install what we want. Uh, the, the more interesting one, the government comes into where is the data stored, and some that sometimes that's where you'll get the, the push about it has to be in. The uh, thing in Malaysia, we can probably push C Python through okay, um, and and Malaysia is very open-minded about open source software and that. So there is a lot of PHP in Malaysian government. Um, so in some respects, they're a lot more flexible than uh, some other governments. I, I, I would suggest trying to get something into um, government uh, other than websites for buses and. Stuff like that, <laughs> but especially in the federal government, you would you would be hitting something about, uh, you know, ju you'd have to justify why you you're putting in C Python. Where if I said I was rolling it out um, in this version of Java on this enterprise Java server and things like that, they're probably not going to question it because in the end they're not going to support the internal code. You know, with Python you're always going to get a battle if somebody thought they were had to um, support the code. 
um, because there's be this belief there aren't programmers now there. I certainly believe, based on the number of job ads that come through the SciPy list now, we, we must have, <laughs> we're past the tipping point um, with an XPHP. Uh, but yeah, no. Uh, the, the big thing with government is more about where data is stored. Um, and you know, so for software as a service, we have to, the data will have to be stored in the country of wherever the government is. Which is a little bit sad because it's expensive in Malaysia. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>